Hello, Joe Neville here, back with another Aruba Central API Express. Here's the question for this video. Using Postman, do I have to manually run each request? So the last couple of videos have been focused on using Aruba Central API and Postman as a GUI API client to allow you to interact with the API, learn the authorization, the calls that you need, and see the data coming back, even if you don't know how to code. But one of the big drawbacks from what I've shown so far is that we're manually running each one of the API calls. The answer is, of course, no, we don't have to. What you can do is use the Postman runner to group requests together into a workflow. That means we can take our authorization call, so the post call to refresh a token, put that at the beginning of a workflow in the runner, and then bundle our other get or post calls underneath that. So you just press one button and the whole thing goes off and you get your responses. That saves you time, of course, because you are automating, but also if you're running a demo, you don't have to worry about the token timing out. A bit like modern DJing, you just press play and then stand back and bask in the adoration of of your peers. Yeah, it could happen. Here I am on my Postman workspace. I've got my refresh underscore one collection from the last video and I've got my three calls there. To show you the issue, I'll run this get call and I get an error because the access token is older than two hours. I haven't run this post call in the last two hours. What that means is that I have to run this first and then go over to the get and run that. There we go. That can be a little annoying. So let's bundle these calls together to run the post call first and then the get calls. And we do that by going to the runner. There's a button up here, hit that button. And it's actually a different screen that we're opening up. Here we have the collection runner screen. I've got recent runs there and I have my collections if you had multiple collections they'll be listed here I've got my collection here refresh underscore one so I'm going to hit that and there you can see the different calls in there now don't forget this you need to set the environment for the dynamic variables so I'll set that to refresh I'm going to leave these you got save responses, keep variable values. Okay, I'm just going to leave that. Now, the other thing to look for is the run order. Over on the right here, in the collection, I've just got them listed with the gets first and then the post. That's the way that I built it in the video. But for the run, we need the post first to do the authorization, refresh, and then the get calls. And the way that we change that is to pull this up above. Can be a little bit awkward, it's worked first time there, great. And you can skip calls if you don't, you just untick them there when we do the run. So you've got a good level of control over what you are running. If you had multiple get calls and you just run the post, you can always untick the post and then just do the gets until you find that you need to do the refresh. But for this, I'm gonna show you the post and then the two gets. And you don't have to be the most eagle-eyed to notice that there's a big blue button down here, which says run refresh underscore one. So we're going to run that. Then we have this run results screen come up and that's got our calls in there. It says the request does not have any tests because the runner is actually for testing that you can set. I'm not using it for that. All I'm doing is using it to bundle the calls together. As you can see, we've got 200 OKs for each one of our calls. Now, if you want to have a look at that response data, go down to the console at the bottom. So bottom left, and then you can see the calls. This is where you can get a lot more information about your calls. Calls. The post call was fine, so we know that the authorization refresh cycle has worked. Let's dive in and have a look at some of this get information then. It gives you a lot more information from the request says it's a bit like a debug really. We don't need that. If we're just going straight into the response body to see what information is returned, we can go to the response body here, hit this orange icon, and that will open up. And there you can see you've got the different responses. So I'll pull that up. You can see the pretty printed J and there. Clear that off and we'll go to the next one, close those down and you can see response body, hit that and then you've got the information from my APs. And that's all there is to it. If we clear this off, we could go back to the collection runner then and imagine you were running some work and you didn't need to do the post. You just untick the post there, close that down, run it again and you'll just get your two get calls console and that will give you the information returned. Excellent. Thus, if you build out a collection with the calls that you want, put 
the calls into the correct order like this and you could have a potted demo where all you have to do is open up Postman, open up the runner and press run. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Joe Neville and goodbye.